Hallelujah. Amen. As the psalmist said, this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Can I hear some people rejoicing before the Lord this morning? And wherever you are watching from or listening from, just in case you are watching this in its recorded format or listening to this message as a recording, I pray that you'll be able to rejoice in the Lord. For the joy of the Lord is our strength. Do not allow the devil to steal your joy in the Lord. Never allow the devil to steal your peace that is in the Lord. Because the peace he gives, as he said in John, it is not the kind of peace that the world gives. And Paul explained it in Philippians. It is that peace that surpasses all understanding. It is not the regular peace. It is not the kind of peace that religions are talking about. It is not the kind of peace that the UN is talking about. Jesus can give you peace in the midst of a storm. That even when you are going through anything in this life, you still have the ability to rejoice. You still have the ability to say, God deserves my greatest praise. I don't know if you're in that kind of place right now whereby a lot is happening but you still have the ability to rejoice or you feel like the whole world is on you covering you up but I want you to know that Jesus is still Lord Jesus is still on the throne he reigns above every circumstance he reigns above every condition he reigns in the lockdown and out of the lockdown he reigns when you are in America and he reigns when you are in Africa he reigns when you are at the mountain top and he reigns when you are in the valley. Jesus still reigns up to this day. Well, I would like to share the word of God with you today. And today we are continuing with the Colossian series. If you have been following, we have covered four parts so far of the Colossian series. And today we are going to be covering part five of the Colossian series. And it is entitled, The Position of Christ. Somebody say, The Position of Christ. Christ. Now, we are going to talk about the position of Christ as we read from Colossians chapter 1 from verse 18 to verse 20. That's where we're going to be today. So let us read together in Jesus' name. Verse 18, he says, He is also the head, the life source and leader of the body, the church. And he's the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he himself will occupy the first place. He will stand supreme and be preeminent in everything. We are reading from the Amplified Version. And verse 19 he says, For it pleased the Father, for all the fullness of deity, the sum tot of his essence, all his perfection, powers, and attributes, to dwell permanently in him. In who? In the Son. And verse 20 goes on to say, And through the intervention of the Son, to reconcile all things to himself, making peace with believers through the blood of his cross, through him, I say, whether things on earth or things in heaven. Now, we are going to talk about the position of Christ. Remember, we have been covering Colossians steadily, Slowly but steadily. And in case you missed the first four parts, they are available on YouTube. They are available in audio format. You could always request for them. You can request for uh, those four parts that came before this one. So today we are looking at where does Christ stand? According to the scriptures, what is the position of Christ? Where does the Bible place Christ? Where does the word of God place Christ? Because so many people have placed him in different categories. Some people say he's the most famous man that has ever been. Some people say his position is that of the best religious leader. So they call him the religious people, of course. Some people say he was a good uh, prophet, a good teacher. And that's their position of Jesus. But according to the word of God, what is the position of Christ? First of all, we see the Bible telling us that he is the head. When you read the first part that we read in verse 18, it says... He is also the head. And in talking about him as the head, it talks about him as the life source, as the leader of the body. We are talking about the body of Christ, which is the church. 
When it comes to his position in the church, Jesus is the leader of the church. Jesus is the head of the church. Some religion has their head as a living man. And they keep replacing that man when the other man dies. And they call him the head of their church all over the world. And whatever he says passes as if God has said it. If he wakes up one day and he says, this is what I say as the head of this church. Our priest should marry. They will all adhere because that man has said. But guess what? We thank God that the true church of Jesus Christ has its head as one that can never die. He that overcame death, he was once on this planet. He walked here. He sacrificed himself for the church. And guess what? He still leads the church. He still has full authority over his body. And as you can see the head on a person's body, so is Jesus Christ. What does the head do? The head does the planning. The head does the coordination of the entire body. And that is what Jesus is. The church is part of him and he is part of the church. Jesus is not far away from the church. Without Jesus, the church is a headless corpse. Do you hear what I just said? Without Jesus, the church is a headless corpse. Paul talks about it in 1 Corinthians 12, and you will go and read it by yourself. But he talks about the different parts of the body. And he says the body of Christ, the church, is a body. And each of us is a certain part. I don't know which part you are. Help me ask your neighbor, which part are you on the body? I don't know which part you think you are. Some people are the hips probably on the body. Some people uh, believe they are the toes. Some people believe they are the hands. I don't know what part you are on the body. But in 1 Corinthians 12, Paul explains that we are a body. None of us is independent of the other. And the body is not composed of only one part. But guess what? That body that he's explaining can only be from the neck to the toes. The head is Jesus Christ himself. And as long as he's the head, he's supposed to do the work of the head. Some people are fighting to be the head of Jesus' church. But you cannot be the head of Jesus' church because anything with two heads becomes a monster. Only Jesus can be the head of his church. And the church of Jesus Christ cannot be a monster. It is the body of Christ. It is the beloved of the Lord. So Jesus retains the position of being the head of the church. And in case you are trying to fight for that position, leave that position. It has already been covered. Only Jesus can be the head of his church. Some people try to fight and get titles to, so that they can feel they're they somewhere, somewhere about the head of the body of Christ. But you don't have to fight for that. Just being in the body of Christ is a privilege enough. Amen. You don't have to fight to take on Jesus' place. You don't have to be Jesus Jr. or Holy Ghost Jr. You can just be in your place in the body of Christ, knowing that Jesus is the head. He's the one that is supposed to help us with the coordination of everything in the body. Just like your brain controls everything that goes on in your body. It is my brain that tells my hand what to do. It is my brain that tells my mouth how to speak and what to say. It is the brain that supplies everything that goes through my sensory system to the rest of the body all right to the toes. It is my brain that even dictates how my heart will pump the blood. So the moment the head has a problem then the whole body has a problem. But thanks be to God, we have a head that will never have a problem. Hallelujah. Jesus will never have a problem. He will never have a sick day. He will never have a bad hair day. He will never have an, an issue with, with his thinking. He will never even say, I need to rest this head. I need to sleep a little bit. I need to take a nap. He never sleeps and he never slumbers. And that's why the church of Jesus Christ is unstoppable. That's why the church of Jesus Christ will always move on. Even if the toes get a problem, as long as the head is still functioning right, we are still okay. Even if the hands get an issue, as long as the head is still fine, we are okay. We still know there is hope because the head shall never die again. Because the head lives forevermore. Because the head is the description of all perfection. Because the head is the son of God himself. He is the head of this body. And as long as we allow him to be the head, the body of Christ 
will always be okay. He is our source. That's what he says. He's the life source. And he's the leader of the church. That is the position of Christ in the body. He is the head. He's part of the body, but he's the head. Hallelujah. And it also tells us that Jesus is the beginning. That's what he says. And he is the beginning. He is the beginning of everything. He is the beginning of the church that we just talked about. He is the beginning of all creation. John talks about him and he says, in the beginning was the word. He is the beginning of all things. He is the beginning of life as we know it. He is the beginning of creation. And guess what, child of God? He should be the beginning of your relationship. He should be the beginning of your marriage. He should be the beginning of your business. He should be the beginning of whatever you pursue. He should be the beginning of your vision and your dream. Some people eventually get issues along the way. And if you ask them, was Jesus the beginning of this? Was he the source of this idea? They do not have a perfect answer because they clearly know he was not the beginning. But you have to live with this attitude that in whatever I do in life, Jesus must be the beginning. Amen. Somebody just said that in whatever I do in my life, in Jesus must be the beginning. Jesus must be the beginning. Because that is what he's supposed to be. That is his position in everything that we know on this planet. When you get an idea, ask yourself, what was the beginning of that idea? How did it start? How did it commence? How did it get to your mind? You know, sometimes when people have issues in their relationships, sometimes I ask them, tell me how the relationship began. And they think I'm just trying to create some conversation. But you know what? The beginning is very important. The foundation is always important. Sometimes people get into business and then they get issues five years later. And you ask them, how did it start? You have to make it a point, child of God, that Jesus should always be the beginning. Don't begin anything, not even a ministry, when it is not because of Jesus, when it is not Jesus who is setting the first brick, when Jesus is not the foundation upon whom you are building, you may be doing good things, but the question is, was the inspiration a Jesus inspiration? Was he the beginning? Because that is supposed to be his position. And then what does he say? Number three, he says he's the firstborn from the dead and he stands supreme and takes first place before all things. He is supreme before all things. He is the supreme power, the firstborn from the dead, that he himself will occupy the first place. He will stand supreme and be preeminent, not in some things, not of the things in the earth, not of the things created before Adam, not of the things in heaven only, but in everything. Jesus is the supreme power. He's not just part of everything. He's not one of them. He's not just about heaven or just about earth or just about mankind. In everything, he stands as the supreme power. He stands out supreme. I can explain the part of the firstborn in the previous parts. You can find it there. But he stands supreme and takes the first place before all things. That is the positioning of Christ. Before everything that you know that was created. Before all the planets that you talked about in geography. Before all the science that man can never have. Before all the discoveries that the explorers can never make. Jesus stands as the supreme power above all things and before everything in Jesus' mighty name. And what does he say next? He says it pleased the Father that all fullness may dwell in Christ. In other words, he's the one-stop destination. Hallelujah. He is a one-stop destination. You know, people talk of one-stop destinations as places where you can go and you find everything. Some people build those expensive places and the moment you go there, Everything is there. Everything that you can talk about in your life. Everything from what the children need to what the parents need to what you can think of shopping. So they call them one-stop destinations. But guess what? Some things they don't have. 
But Jesus is the perfect description of a one-stop destination. Do you know why? He says, for it pleased the Father. For all the fullness. Somebody say the fullness. The fullness. Oh, Rama for all the fullness of God. The, all the fullness of deity. That is the fullness of God himself. The sum total of his essence. The sum total of his perfection. Of his powers. Of his attributes. To dwell permanently in Jesus Christ. Meaning the moment you reach Jesus Christ. You have reached the fullness of God. The moment you reach Jesus Christ. You have reached the fullness of anointing. The moment you reach Jesus Christ. You have reached the fullness of grace. The moment you reach Jesus Christ, you have reached the fullness of the manifestation of God. You don't need any other thing. Jesus is the one-stop destination that God set for us. That the moment you reach Jesus, you have reached everything. And that is why John spoke in John 1, 16, and he said, And of his fullness have we all received grace for grace. Grace upon grace. From what? From his fullness. Oh, his fullness. From the fullness of God, we receive everything. You don't need a certain person to lie to you. That the moment you go to this man of God, then you have the full grace of God. They are not Jesus Christ. Some people go and worship men. The moment you touch in that man's hands, that man is not Jesus Christ. The moment you sow a seed in that man's life, no, that is not written anywhere in scripture. The only thing we see in scripture that Jesus Christ alone is the one-stop destination. Whether you need healing, God put the fullness of healing in Jesus Christ. Whether you need anointing, God placed the fullness of anointing in Jesus Christ. Do you need grace? God put the fullness of grace in Jesus Christ. Not in a certain man, not in a certain teaching, not in a certain church, not in a certain holy place. It is in Jesus Christ that God put the fullness of anything and everything you could ever think of God. So what would you want from God? All you need is Jesus. All you need is Jesus. He's a one-stop destination. Some people hope from one church to another. Do you know what they're looking for? Some of them say, you know, in this church, what I've, this, what I've realized, they have a great message about this. But then the other church, they have the anointing for money. Who told you that any church has the anointing for money? Only Jesus has the fullness of the anointing for money. So stop hoping from one church to another. I hear looking for the different anointings. Whichever doctrine you read is not from the Bible. All the fullness of anointing is in Jesus Christ. Regardless of where you are, whether you are in the desert, whether you are by the sea, whether you are in the mountains, as long as you reach Jesus, the fullness of God is there with you. Hallelujah. Amen. The moment you reach Jesus, there is nothing that can miss. There is nothing that is lacking. Some things may not manifest immediately, but you have them in Christ Jesus. Everything you need is in Christ Jesus because it pleased the Father. Isn't it amazing that he pleased the Father? That he does not take us to so many places, to so many people, because it pleased the, if it pleased the Father that he puts the fullness of security in Angel Michael, and he puts the fullness of healing in Jesus, and then he puts the fullness of revelations in angel Gabriel and then he puts we would have to be hoping from the other angel to the other angel to the other son of God and to the other one but God made it easy it pleased the father that we don't have to go to so many places we don't have to look for so many people all we have to do is to go to this one Jesus because it has pleased the father to put everything in that one Jesus Christ his beloved son hallelujah somebody amen and then what does he say? He is the reconciler. What does he say in the verse? He says, and through the intervention of the son to reconcile all things to himself, making peace with believers through the blood of his cross. Through him, I say, whether things on earth or things in heaven. What is the position of Jesus when it comes to all creation of the things on earth, of the things in heaven? He is the reconciler. He is the mediator between the father and man, between the creator and his creation. He alone can take that place, child of God. Not the Virgin Mary, not some saint, not some pastor. 
He alone can reconcile us to God. And you know why he alone can take that place? Because he alone paid the price. He alone paid the price. Nobody else could ever do it. Nobody else paid with their blood. Only Jesus Christ paid with his blood. Only Jesus Christ made that sacrifice. And that is why only Jesus Christ can never take that position. No one else hung on that cross as the son of God. No one else hung on that cross and bled when they were totally sinless. No one else, only Jesus could ever do it for you. And that's why he alone can reconcile us with God. Child of God, according to God, that is the position of Christ in the church. That is the position of Christ in heaven and all creation. What does he say? Number one, we just realize he's the head. And number two, he's the beginning. Number three, he's the supreme power. Number four, he's the, the one stop destination. And number five, he's the reconciler. We know that as the position of Christ, according to the word we just read. But then the question is, child of God, what is the position of Christ in your life? I would like you to reflect on that because we see the position of Christ according to God and according to his word. But according to you, according to how you see your life, what is the position of Christ in your life? Can you say he's the head of your life? Can you say when you look at everything that you are doing, he's the beginning? Is he the supreme power that you rely upon on everything? Is he preeminent in all your thinking, in all your plans, in all your shades, in whatever you do? Or he's always in the back seat? Some people have Jesus in the passenger seat. He's not the one driving. He's not the head. He's not the leader. He's not the source. They are the source to themselves. Their salary sometimes is the source. Some acknowledge their fathers as their source as the supreme power in their lives. And even when they lose them, they ask questions like, now what shall I do? He was my everything. Never put any human being in the position of Christ. Never place any human being in the position that Christ should take. Never let anybody be the source of your life. Nobody should be the one that is determining your every course. You should not even be your own leader. Jesus should be. He should be the source of your inspiration. He should be the source of your vision. He should be the source of your motivation. Everything. That's the position that is supposed to carry in your life. But is that the position in which Christ is? Is he your one-stop destination? Or when it comes to some things, somebody else has to cover the position. Or when it comes to some things, then you find another alternative. Is Jesus everything? Is Jesus your reconciler with God? Do you recognize him as such? Or you are still praying to the Virgin Mary to pray for you unto God? Or you are still talking to some dead saints that they told you are your saints that they were very holy? They can never be as holy as Christ. They had a, a mom and a dad just like you. Unlike Jesus, who has not begotten like any of us. So is Jesus the mediator between you and God? Or you are still looking for some juju somewhere. You are looking for some ancestors to help you. You need to know Jesus as your reconciler. You need to know Jesus as that supreme power in your life. I want to talk to somebody that may be watching or listening. And you have not yet known Jesus as your mediator. Probably you have heard me twice or thrice in this message talking to you. You are still looking at some person to go for you before God. Some of you actually, you are still paying some people so that they can talk for you before God. You are using them as your mediators, as your reconcilers. Some people even see a man behind a certain veil and they tell him all their sins so that the man can talk for them before God. That is not supposed to be, child of God. You, all you need between you and God is Jesus. He's the one that stands in the gap. And if you have not known him as your mediator, you need to know him. 
and you need to give him your life. If you are there and you are not yet born again, just repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I know you are the Son of God. You are my Savior. You are the only mediator between man and God. You are the only reconciler that can connect me to God. I believe you with my heart. Confess you with my mouth that from today onwards, you are my Lord and you are my Savior. My all in all, my head, my beginning, my supreme power, my one-stop destination, and my reconciler with God. In Jesus' mighty name. If you made that prayer, you were born again. And it's as simple as that. The beginning is as simple as that. Jesus is the beginning of this salvation work. And just receiving him like you just received him, that is the beginning of your new life for this life and for eternity in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And for those of you that are born again, probably you are evaluating yourself and you're asking yourself, is Jesus indeed the leader of my life? He's either beginning of whatever I'm doing or I've been doing some things and it's all about me. You need to think about child of God. And I want us to pray right now and talk to him and tell him, Lord, I don't know where you have been in my life, but I would like you to take your position in my life. Tell him, Lord, I repent if there is any way I pushed you away from where you belong in my life. But may you take your position. Everybody say, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. I cannot tell whether I've really put Christ where he belongs in my everything. But today I pray that if I had taken Jesus out of his position in my life, in my businesses, in my engagements, in whatever I do, may he get back to his position. Precious Jesus, let me hear you call him. Tell him, precious Jesus. Please take your position in my life. Occupy your place in my heart. Occupy your place in my relationships. May you come fast in everything that I do. May you be my superpower. May you be the one that I look unto for direction, for instruction, for inspiration. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. That is your word for today. And in case you'd like to reach out to us, if you're just watching or listening, the number is plus 256-702-230201. And you can subscribe to the YouTube channel. It is Apostle Henry Sabiti. And you can also find me on Facebook as Henry Sabiti or as Apostle Henry Sabiti. Till next time, may the good Lord bless you. Amen.